What is the cringiest thing you've done to get a crush's attention? Story 1. For some reason or another, I had been bragging about my ability to spit a watermelon seed with deadly accuracy. The young woman to whom had made these claims, which probably should have sent her spinning in any direction other than toward me, challenged me to hit her textbook as a show of this alleged skill. I'd like to mention that I did not tell her to stand directly in front of me. Anyway, my first shot went wide, sailing far off to the girl's left. She said, something akin to ha and took to lightheartedly berating me for overblowing the scope of my abilities as she was speaking fired my second shot and against all odds it landed directly in her mouth needless to say we were both shocked and in an effort to evoke some humor from the situation said something to the effect of well hey since we've sort of kissed already want to make it official just in case you were wondering it's definitely not the best idea to suggest tonsil hockey when your intended paramour is already suppressed gags. Too long didn't read? Shot my black load into a girl's mouth. I'm siding with the guy here. He was making his claims for sure, but the girl called him on it, and she didn't have to stand in front of him. She kind of put herself in the way. Not all that wise on her part. Kudos to the guy for following through. Story 2. In elementary, went to school with a couple of dudes that were very gymnastically inclined. They would do a double backflip off the swings instead of just one. They would do flips off the monkey bars, standing backflips, wall flips, you name it. The girl loved them. They would sit and be an audience for these guys every lunch almost. I got jealous, practiced on my trampoline for a few days, tried some handsprings, which got pretty good at, forwards not backwards. The next time they were showing off, joined them. Boom guy, it comes running through, handspring, cartwheel. Backflip, backflip. Guy number two comes bolting behind him, cartwheel into aerial, into backflip. Here I come, cartwheel, into back handspring. Oh wait, don't know how to do one backward. Land on my neck, win myself, start crying. I'm not cringing so much as shuddering from the thought of the pain. It's like the physical version of studying all week for a math test and then realizing you had an English test. I hope he didn't have any serious injuries from that. I wonder how the two guys reacted to him. Story 3. My own tale of cringe. Had a crush on a guy who had two classes with. It made sense in my 15-year-old brain that intense eye contact would signal to him that was all in. Every time we had to talk about something, stare directly into his eyes without blinking. Also read that people like large eyes, but couldn't do makeup, since mascara makes your eyes look larger. So it'd make my eyes as wide as I could. This also meant that if I was talking to another boy, should look away as much as possible so he didn't think I was into them instead. Okay, that's cringy, but that's also creepy. Ew. I don't know if it's creepier than if it's a girl or not. It reminds me of the meme of the overly attached girlfriend. What would you do if you had that girl staring at you like that? How would you feel if you were a different guy that was trying to get her attention and she wouldn't even look at you or talk to you? Ugh. Story 4. So the guy's in the ninth grade, last day before Christmas break. There was a girl on the school bus who was once into me earlier in the year, but had now cooled off for some reason. I needed to get the fire going again, so I was going to bring mistletoe on the bus, pull it out of my backpack at some point, and be like, oh yeah, this stuff grows everywhere. I was just picking some of it this morning while was waiting for the bus, and that's all. What was hoping for was that she would get the nerve to kiss me, since I was holding mistletoe. Well, mistletoe grows high up in the tree. Hmm. So I cut a piece of holly and trimmed the thorns off of it because who really knows what mistletoe looks like anyway. So I'm sitting on the bus, she's sitting behind me, and I'm working up the nerve. Then the bus stops, this guy gets on, and immediately proceeds to give this girl a rose. And she gets excited and hugs him. And I'm sitting there with a trimmed holly branch in my backpack. This sounds more like the cringy road not taken. How long did he wait to try and work up the nerve? Had he ever talked to this person before? Had they known each other before? I have a feeling she doesn't even know he was alive. Story 5. We had a foreign exchange student my freshman year of high school. She was French and absolutely gorgeous, so naturally all of us boys were smitten with her. She was in choir and sang really well, so figured since I was a musician as well, that was my in with her. So busted my butt and learned a new love song from a very popular French opera. It took me a really long time to memorize and thought it would be a bold gesture. So, sang it to her flawlessly and asked her how she liked it, thinking that taking the effort to learn a love song in her language would 
would be a great gesture. Well, that day found out that she was Swedish, not French. I'm freaking stupid. You ever watch The Muppet Show? Remember the Swedish chef? Jim Henson created that character because he once picked up a cassette tape called How to Speak Mock Swedish. He would play the tape in the car and speak along with the obviously comedic tape. Apparently his sons were embarrassed when he would do that. That's less cringy than the story I just read. Story 6. This hurts to remember. On summer break after 6th grade, saw the boy I had a crush on at a festival in my hometown. Had no idea how to get his attention, so deliberately I placed my foot in front of a woman pushing a baby buggy so that she'd run over it. Made a big scene out of it and started to yell and pretend that it hurt really bad. It didn't. Poor woman looked traumatized. That's one story that keeps me awake at night. Oh, by the way, he did notice that and proceeded to laugh at me with his friends. What was I thinking? Story 7. Leaned over in English class every day and copied his handwriting until ours matched. Had this theory that if our handwriting looked the same, he would fall in love with me. But he turned out to be mean, and I wound up with pretty handwriting. He noticed and made terrible fun of me in front of his friends on one of the last days of school, grade 7, and was crushed. Oh, Caleb, you were so handsome in your monster energy hat. How could you? This is the funniest one to me. Where does it follow that you would be attracted to someone whose handwriting matches is yours. What if you work really hard to make your handwriting really unique? What if you just don't care about handwriting? And this person was really mean, but he had really pretty handwriting? That kind of doesn't make sense to my brain. Story 8. I started smoking. That mistake lasted 15 years after 14-year-old me moved on from that crush. Yep, me too. We worked together at the local ice cream shop. She said, I'm going to pick up some smokes. You want anything? Me. Yeah, I'll take some smokes too. She, with one eyebrow arched. Uh, what kind? Me, panicking. Oh, whatever you're getting is fine. And that's how I started smoking Marlboro Menthol Lights. Are you kidding me? Picking up an addiction is never a reason to attract someone. And they never got with this person and had a habit that took 15 years to kick. I feel like that mom cliche everyone says, well, if she jumped off a cliff, would you follow her? But I think this person might actually follow. Story 9. I'm running a 5K tomorrow for no other reason than she is, and I'm going to have a heart attack. Edit. Appreciate all the positive comments, and I'll remember your support when it gets tough tomorrow. Thanks for the silver. I feel famous. Update. Since asked, just finished. Only stopped twice, and my time wasn't too bad either. Thought about this thread when it got tough a few times, so thanks again for the support. Story 10. In high school, tried to deep throat a burrito in front of my crush. I don't know, 14-year-old me thought that would be sly or something? Cue me choking horribly for about five minutes straight while trying not to vomit, tears streaming non-stop down my cheeks, and half of a spit-up bean burrito from Taco Bell all down the front of my clothes. Freshman year was a tough one. <laughs> you know what's interesting about this one? No mention of gender anywhere in the story. In a way, that makes this kind of progressive. But yeah, someone risking their life to attract a crush. Well, I guess that tracks. This person got some really cool nicknames after attempting that stunt. I wonder what their crush thought about it. Story 11. I was young, called Crush's phone every 60 seconds for an hour. No answer, repeat. I figured she'd pick up once she got home and I wanted to talk to her ASAP. Unfortunately, she was on the phone with someone else the entire time, getting the, you have another call, notifications about incoming calls. Just wasn't responding to them. After about the 60th time, she picked up and screamed, what? And I tried to worm out of it like it wasn't me that had just called her over and over and over. She didn't buy it, of course. This one still keeps me up at night 30 years later. Story 12. Back when I was in middle school, I had a crush on this girl. I was into writing at the time, so I put her in a fantasy story I wrote, where she was a warrior. She hated it and told everybody, and showed them the copy I gave her. This did not help my bullying. I still die from thinking about the cringe. Become a writer. Get your script adapted into an HBO series. Win best adapted screenplay. Call her out in acceptance speech. Mic drop. Yeah, you can always put your pain into your writing. I'm glad this person has a creative outlet to get all this stuff out. Making a screenplay about it is probably not a bad idea. Even if it doesn't go anywhere, you can get it all out of your system. Maybe write about someone nicer. Story 13. In kindergarten, proposed to my crush by yelling across the playground. Ugh, didn't get an answer back. In high school, got some presents for my different crush's birthday. Barely talked to her in person because was painfully shy, but always talked to her on AIM. Went up to her awkwardly with a red face, gave her the presents, said happy birthday, and walked away immediately out of sheer embarrassment. 
She told me later she liked the gifts. I had a crush on this girl that was a friend of mine's cousin at his 14th birthday party, and she had a helium balloon tied to her wrist, so hatched a plan and not so subtly untied it a bit while talking to her so it would float to the ceiling, and only I could reach it for her because I was the tallest boy at the party. Except the ceiling was higher than anticipated, so I had to stand on something and jump, and when I jumped, I farted, and when I farted, it was a wet one, and my jeans shorts were white. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of this video and have a wonderful day. Story 14. My dad tells this story of when he was like nine years old. He was waiting at his school bus stop with a couple of girls that he liked. There was this big rock by him that was like a mini boulder. He told the girls he could throw this rock over a moving car. I guess he wanted them to think he was strong or something. So he waits for a car to drive by, lifts and chucks the giant rock, but instead of going over the car, it crashes into the car's windshield. The car stops and the preacher of his church comes out. Super mad. My dad then booked it home. Story 15. In first grade, I had a crush on this girl in my class. My nickname at the time was Snakebite. Adults gave it to me. I don't know. Well, told her my nickname was Snakebite, and it just so turns out that she loves snakes. So we became friends for a while. One day, we were in music class sitting on the floor listening to the teacher. I thought this would be the perfect time to serenade her with the song of my people. So started slithering around her in a circle making hissing noises. The teacher promptly asked me what on earth I was doing and embarrassment ensued. Ooh, the wooing stage is always so embarrassing when you're looking on the outside. But the big question is, how did the girl react? Before the teacher noticed, was she buying it? As the saying goes, it's not stupid if it works. Story 16. I thought it would be a real winner if intentionally played a mandolin very badly while belting out an off-key self-written tune with the only lyrics being, do me now. I did it in front of a friend of mine and he thought it was hilarious, so naturally women and men have the exact same sense of humor. Figured this was a surefire win and we would be planning our wedding in a fortnight. She did not, however, respond favorably to my most humble supplications. Story 17. Asked if she wanted to make out. She let herself into my house one day, walked up to my room, and wanted to have spicy time. But me, being the anxious, nervous idiot that I am, didn't get any of her signals. Instead, we ended up chatting for a while. Then, as was walking her home, asked her. She was super cool about it and didn't run away from me. Anyway, as such is life, eventually messed things up between us and she now hates me. Story 18. 13 years old. I learned my crush had taken ballroom dancing lessons. Delighted to have something to talk to him about, I proceeded to harass him all of homecoming with what I probably thought was good-natured ribbing. Looking back, I was being a jerkwad and straight up making fun of him. Poor guy took it like a champ. But hell, I had no idea how to be social. Sorry, Phil. I guess for some people, teasing works as a way of flirting. But why does it? Why does making fun of someone make it okay? I've always had a problem with being made fun of. I can never tell when someone's being good-natured or if they're being a jerk. That's probably just me. Story 19. I liked a boy in the seventh grade. Every day I would buy a Gatorade and pretend I couldn't open it and asked him to. One day did open it and panicked. Tried to close it again as tight as could and give it to him to open it for me. He called me out on how easy it was to open and looked like it had already been opened. I wanted to climb under the bleachers. Story 20. Sheepishly handed her a letter and ran away in like 10th grade that would have been like a rambly mess in speech form that basically said, Hey, you're cool. Want to hang out sometime? In three paragraphs. Because I was nervous as all hell and didn't know how to people. Funny thing is that she brought it up again in senior year and asked if I wanted to catch a movie or something. Story 21. I was 15 and had a crush on this boy for two years. One day, a friend of mine told me that he was about to ask me out. He came up to me, said hello, and while anxiety took the best of me, wanted to look cool, so I said, Huh, do I actually know you? Are you new in school? He instantly turned around and left. We had been classmates since elementary school. No, trying to act aloof. Why? Why did you do that? Nothing wrong with acting cool, but why are you pretending you don't know this person? Not impressive. Not at all. I feel so bad for you. 
Story 22. As a dumb little kid, I got on a swing near her and her friend group so that I could jump off. That wasn't the impressive part, though. I'd first act like I had a rough landing. Not a botched one, mind you. That wouldn't be cool and kind of scrape myself up on the wood chips. And then act like it was really devastating, but I could easily walk it off because I was just that gosh darn tough. Story 23. In high school, learned tuba just to impress a girl because she said she liked tubas. Turns out she only said that because she was currently dating a tubist. Also in 8th grade, somebody left me lyrics to a love song by the Beatles, but changed all the names to mine, even the ones that didn't make sense. Story 24. I was maybe 14 at the time and saw my crush riding their bike down my street, so I ran to grab a blanket, dashed outside, laid out on the lawn, and pretended to talk really loud on the phone. I had to pretend to have a conversation because I had no friends to actually call. This reminds me of that comment on a similar thread a few weeks ago where they sat on the side of the road in front of her crush's house and read a book as if that were a totally normal thing to do. This just sounds like Seinfeld sitcom territory. No, that's an insult to Seinfeld. This is more like average sitcom territory. Just sitting at their house and doing something casually? No matter how casually you think you're doing something, they're still gonna think you're stalking them. It's like the old adage, whatever looks cool and romantic in romantic comedies is going to be creepy in real life. Story 25. In 12th grade, I had a huge crush on this guy in one of my classes. Knew his favorite book and movie was Fight Club, so googled everything about it along with watching the movie. On Valentine's Day, I sent him a card that said, I want to have your abortion, and gave him my phone number. Story 26. Aw oh man, why you gotta bring up these memories? There have been a few, but one of them was making this girl a mix CD and did a schlocky Photoshop cover for it and everything. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I don't want to suffer alone. Story 27. Early college years. She mentioned offhand that she was reading The Hunger Games. So naturally, I read the entire trilogy and then tried to bring it up in conversation. She wasn't into me, and that certainly did not help. Ugh. Well, did they end up enjoying the books anyway? You'd think him reading it would have at least got him somewhere in the door. It sounds like he was shut down completely. Maybe he can find someone else that likes Hunger Games. Story 28. I lived in a neighborhood with an elementary school smack dab in the middle of it. Most kids knew where the other kids lived. I once put a bunch of ladybugs into a mason jar with flowers and poked holes in the top to provide air. Left it on her porch wrapped in a sock. All the ladybugs were dead by the time she got it. Sorry, Aaron. Story 29. Pretended that I didn't give a care about them or that I was madly attracted to them. Played it cool. Guess how many times it worked? None. Still doing it at 21. Story 30. My crush was a kid who lived down the block from my house. Stole his dog from his yard and then went to his front door to return it and get to talk to him. He said he saw me take him out of the yard. Avoided him after that. Again, this sounds like a plan straight out of a sitcom. Maybe these are. These are a lot of kids, so that's probably all they're watching growing up. I think stealing animals to get attention from other people is kind of a bad road to go down. Story 31. I remember sophomore year, I sent a girl a carnation on Valentine's Day. She came up to me later that day and said, I heard you sent this to me. Do you want to go out? And somewhere in my brain, I thought this is a prank. Looked at her dead in the eyes and said, Nope, someone else must have sent it. Looking back on it, she definitely knew I sent it. She was part of the group that delivered them. Story 32. Became a fan of Aerosmith because he used to wear an Aerosmith t-shirt all the time. This was around the time Get a Grip came out, so like mid-90s. To this day, change the radio station when Aerosmith comes on. Story 33. I confessed to her that I liked her friend so she would help me get with her. I did it so I could spend more private time with my actual crush. Worked like a charm. 14-year-old me was a genius. Plot twist? She agreed to help you so that she could spend more time alone with you. I think that last statement is more to the truth. They're both attracted to each other, but they have to pretend that they don't. It's like an infinite Mobius loop of unrequited love and cringe. Don't forget the cringe. Story 34. Not me, but the girl who had a crush on me. In sixth grade, she dropped me a paper from the second floor and ran away. It said, Will you go out with me? Yes or yes? She was angry at me the next day for not giving her the paper back, but now we're still friends and she realizes how cringy it was. 
Story 35. In this case, it wasn't me, but my actual crush. I was hanging out with her, and she and I were kind of cuddled on a bench, and she started rubbing her face against mine like cats do. It was really weird, but having a crush on her, I didn't say anything. Story 36. Told her on AIM I had a crush on someone. When she asked who, waited a bit, then typed you, and signed off dramatically. We did not get married. Mm, had the courage to say it, but didn't wait around for the answer. Half points. If he signed off that quickly, she probably thought it was some kind of a prank. So you didn't get married. Did you ever even speak after that? I gotta have some kind of follow-up. Story 37. Once when I was 14, I accidentally sent a picture of me in a super fancy dress to my crush because I wanted him to ask me to the dance. Story 38. I asked her out by parking outside her house and writing it on the windows of my car in car chalk. She sent the dog outside and said, You should leave. My dog is outside. He's pretty mean. Woof. Story 39. I am conversation died down and couldn't think of something to say, so spammed keys on the keyboard, hit enter, and said my cat ran across the keyboard. Gotta admit, that one isn't too bad. I think it would only be cringe if she even found out that it was him all along and not the cat. Maybe it could even stretch it out a bit, have the cat walk back and forth. I could see that one working. Story 40. High school freshman me thought that it would be a great idea to put paper clips in her hair, as in stab them through her hair bun. Story 41. When I was in like third grade or something, pulled my shirt down below my shoulder. I'm a guy. The teacher called me out too. Story 42. Put an entire pack of bubble yum in my mouth and tried to chew it. Ended up drooling on myself. She left the lunch table. Yeah, unless she specifically turned on by massive amounts of bubble gum, I don't see how this one would work. And not a lot of follow through on what you would do once you got all that bubble gum in your mouth. What did you expect? Were you thinking of blowing a massive bubble or something? Help me help you figure out what the end game was here. Story 43. In elementary school, climbed onto a snowbank during recess and basically did the 2003 version of twerking in snow pants. Story 44. Purposely avoided talking to her. Still know her now. Still kind of have feelings for her now. Still rarely talk to her. Story 45. Oh, God. Made a fake Facebook account to post on my wall and talk to him so it looks like I had made friends. Okay, that one's cringe and desperate. That's like Zuckerberg at the end of the social network movie cringe. You might as well sew a life-size rag doll of your crush and set him in a chair so you can talk to him. Story 46. I used to pole dance on a lamppost outside a boy's house when I was 13. Story 47. Log in and out of MSN Messenger when it was still a thing. Story 48. Post dumb IG stories just to see if she viewed. But well, with all the mentions of the older social networks, seeing a one about Instagram is at least a little bit current. I don't feel so old anymore, but kind of on the same lines as that previous Facebook story. At least you're trying to make some original content, right? Story 49. Pretended to smoke crushed up wintergreens as sea substance and ended up with a busted lip. Story 50. When I was in sixth grade, I would yell a lot and be extremely loud when around them. It didn't work. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.